finally welcome back to another collector's discussion uh it's been a while since i've done this but today would be the updated products the first hand pictures of the inner joker uh obviously heath ledger uh i'm not gonna ramble too much on uh because i want to get straight into these pictures because i quickly saved them without fully looking at them and from what i've seen these look just as good as justin's preview if not, I think they've done uh, even more touch-ups from his little quick unboxing preview. Uh, and we'll basically get into it right now. So without any more rambling, if you guys do enjoy this, make sure to like and sub. And we'll get to the pictures. So these are some of the in-hand pictures here. And I want to say some of them are a bit grainy just because of phones. But uh, I think majority of them are pretty good high-def uh, photos of these figures, basically. But... The reason I wanted to start off with this one is, I don't know if it's my eyes playing tricks on me or if it's just the camera work, but this is where I was saying before in the intro where it looks like they've done some differences compared to Justin's video because you can see here the hair, uh, they, they look like two different colors of green, which is accurate to the film. Uh, although I would say the green the more vibrant green should be on the purple suit because at this point of the film is when he's actually in the prison for the iconic, you know, interrogation scene. Uh, and if I remember in Justin's video, they were pretty much identical in color. So the figure that they sent out to him was a bit outdated compared to what we're getting by the looks of it. Uh, so we'll go here. This is another in our hand picture. This is actually a really good picture, so props to whoever done it there. So, I mean, this is pretty good. I mean, this is amazing, to be honest. Uh, this is what I've been wanting for ages. Uh, I had the DX11 for a while. I sold it off back when it was booming in price. I decided to just get rid of it because I already knew that a lot of companies would jump on this, uh, and I was right, as Queen have done what they've done here. This looks insane. Uh, hopefully, I grabbed some pictures of the sculpted hair, because I think the sculpted looks just as good. So, uh, for people that uh, wanted to play safe and get the sculpted, I again, I wouldn't be disappointed, because I think the sculpted looks just as good. Obviously, having rooted, punched hair is going to bring obviously more realism, but I think the sculpted still looks good. So obviously you got the details here, which the amazing seamless look here, which this was worrying at the start because I thought it was going to be rubber uh, or silicon. I'm glad that it's not. Uh, and speaking of silicon and speaking on new 1.6 scale companies, J and D were rumored to be doing 1-6 scale, I think they officially said it, and I think they've actually postponed releasing stuff, and I'm, I think, with the comparison of J&D and Queen, I don't know how much J&D can amp up their work compared to Queen here, uh, and the only thing I can see J&D do unique is uh, the silicon bodies. So have everything silicon, have the head squishy in silicon like the statues. Uh, and for me, I wouldn't even look at that. Uh, I'm not a fan of rubbery silicon-ish bodies. Uh, I, I don't collect statues and the ones that I do, uh, it's definitely not silicon based. Uh, again, I'm just not comfortable with that, I guess. I don't really like that texture. So I'm happy that when this was announced that this is all plastic. Plastic's gonna last longer. It's it's gonna last longer than us, I guess. So you got nothing to worry about deterioration at all with this. And that's something that I'm going to continue buy from Queen if they continue using this material. The rubbery stuff, I'm I'm not looking at that. Uh, and I think that's the only thing J&D can bring to the table because what more difference can J&D do if they start stepping into 1-6? Because obviously they'll do a Joker because they've done a Joker in the third scale, so they want to do it in 1-6 as well, just like this company. 
but uh, that's to see in the future, I guess. Uh, but yeah, this looks really, really nice. The button is correct here, missing. There's weathering all here in the vest, which is really, really nice. Uh, this this print here on the tie and in the, the shirt is... It looks a bit more better than the DX11. Uh, kind of unfair to compare, though, uh, because that's pretty ancient of a figure. The pinstripe pants. It's pretty good, to be honest. Uh, the socks here are really good. Shoes are pretty nice. The shoes aren't fabric, but uh, these are much more accurate compared to the fabric ones that Hot Toys brought out. And then we've got a couple of other guys who have actually just got them in hand in the detail here. Not the best photos to really zoom in on, but it's good to just see just the grand scale of it in uh, someone's collection right now. So you got the pose here of him holding the grenades. Nice to see the magnetic base and seeing that in function. Uh, yeah, I'm really interested in this because I have the Bala Lugosi from Caustic Plastic and they had the same magnetic base. They were, I think, the originators of the magnetic stands. Uh, nice to see Inart took inspiration from that as I don't really like crotch grabbers, and this is a much better presentable uh, item without that crotch grabber. But yeah, this is probably the way I'll display it with this base uh, in the D12 next to my DX19, and probably the gel cell one will go in one of my module cases because I got basically a Joker collection, so I'll throw him in that one. Uh, this is interesting though, so not only this fits in a D12, oh, it might not, because that's raised. This actually won't fit in a D12, so that's the bar there. Yeah, so he's put the little bolts to raise the shelf a bit, so this won't fit in a D12, as you can see, that's the cutoff there. So yeah, this looks like you either have to have an open shelf, or a module case like I am for this diorama piece. I wonder how heavy this is though, because he's put this on one of the shelves in the middle. He hasn't put it on the bottom. Uh, that would be interesting to know how heavy this is, because this is real wood and this is real metal. So, unless this guy has just risked it for the photo, throw this in. That's interesting that it can sustain the weight of this, the glass. What's the difference here? Just another angle turned. So we've got this pose here. And yeah, this is basically the way I will do uh, the Joker and the Detolf like this. Uh, the hit me pose. Similar to the J&D statue where he's kind of got his fist clenched and he's basically in this pose but front on. Uh, but yeah, the coat looks really nice. Uh, hopefully we get... Hopefully I grab the better picture with a bit more that shows a bit better quality so I can see the weathering on the coat. But this looks way better than the bathrobe uh, DX11. Uh, but again, that's the only one in the market, so that's the only one I can compare to right now. It's probably an unfair comparison, but it's the only one we have to compare. And in comparison to that outdated one, this one's much better. But then it's like... Hot Toys done the DX01, which had a good coat, and then we go to the DX11, and they done a bad coat. So, if you wanted the definitive Hot Toys one, you had to get the DX1 and the 11, and kind of swap parts around. Also, in my opinion, the Bank Robber Joker 2.0 had the better head sculpt to fit on that jail cell display that the DX11 had, because it had the wiped away face paint. Uh... Speaking of it here, this looks like the more washed out brown hair. And if I go back to this one, this one looks a bit more vibrant green. And again, it might be just the camera work, but when my review comes, eventually when this comes out to us, uh, I'll go way more in depth and show way more zoomed up. But it looks like from these photos that the head sculpts not only are the expressions slightly different, it looks like the hair is 
color different too, and that's really nice because throughout the movie, his hair was not only different length, it was different color, just going by the procedure of the film. This is interesting though. Uh, this is the DX11 bench, which didn't come with this, right? I don't think we got an interrogation bench. We just got the jail cell diorama and like the concrete slab. So that's nice for you guys that still have the DX11. You can mix it with this or just maybe buy it on eBay singular. So we got this uh, pose as well, which is the diorama the other way, which is actually nice that you can display it both options because the back has like the Dark Knight bat symbol as well. So it's nice you can mix match. I'm actually interested when I get it in hand, which way I want to pose this, uh, the sitting down pose or something like this, maybe with the handcuffs on. Uh, I have to remember if he even posed like this in the film. I think he did. Uh, but yeah, this looks really, really nice. I'm really excited for this to come. Uh, and obviously, because people have got it in hand now, it makes me want to see this even more. Uh, this was probably my most anticipated this year. Uh, as I was a bit... Well, I was pretty disappointed with what happened with Doc Brown from Hot Toys. Uh, if you guys want to see that, it's a bit brutally honest. If people don't want to hear that, then don't click on it. But if you do want to see a genuine review from a hardcore fan... I will link that down and put in end cards and maybe in the comments as well. Uh, but do be in mind, I am a bit brutal with that as, again, I'm a massive Back to the Future fan and wasn't impressed overall with that. Uh, but this is such a good high from being disappointed from that figure. Uh, and I'm so happy that Queen or Inna didn't drop the ball with this going by these photos. So we've got another photo here of the coat. And it's interesting that all the zoomed in ones don't have the coat. Uh, no, this is a different guy. Okay. So you can even see here that the hair is a bit more greener on this one. Because if I go back to this one, this one's more that blonde brown. So that's nice that we got the two different uh, hair colors he had throughout the film. It looks like he's, yeah, he's got less makeup here. If I go to this one, it looks more... Yeah, he looks like he has way more caked on in this. But that's, again, accurate to the film. And I like that they've done that. So, you've got a couple poses here. This one is really interesting. It's like a puppet master. Almost like the Tower of Babel. Uh, Justice League comic. Uh, where Raja al Ghul is kind of like manipulating the Justice League. But yeah, this basically uh, proves the naysayers that you can't pose this. Uh, I, I never understood why people thought that this would be a static statue figure. Uh, Hot Toys didn't like revolutionize the wheel with their articulated figures. Every figure has the same roughly articulation points. So people speculating that Queen would have limited is a bit weird. But uh, I guess to the naysayers that now you've Hopefully you're satisfied that this can move. But yeah, this is what I was talking about there. So this one's got the Dark Knight Joker there. And on the other side, it's got the cracked bat symbol. But yeah, I'm so excited for this. I, I just love what they've done here. So yeah, you've got the crack symbol there for the real wood floor. Everything is metal as it should. Yeah. So you got another pose here. Again, this is not in the packs, I don't think. This is the DX11 Hot Toys display. Which, come to think of it, I'm actually pretty disappointed that I sold the bench and chair. I probably should have just kept that and sold the rest. Uh, but you know, I, I it's probably for the best that I sold it because then I have too much options to pose this in. So here's basically the different head sculpts. So this is the sculpted. And like I said, the sculpted is pretty good. Like I would not be upset if you guys got this. Uh, 
This is probably the safe route for everyone that's not used to custom like rooted hair. Uh, because this isn't like a Hot Toys rooted hair where it's like a wig piece glued on. It's individually punched. Uh, Viper's been pretty well known for that, for his custom world work. But yeah, this looks really, really good. And I love that they done, again, Viper being familiar with the custom world. They done something straight out of what customizers do, which is they conceal it in the box or the little tubes. So you, you don't get it damaged. You get it pre basically posed the hair and it's sent out. Uh, people I think were joking like this looks like the melted metal from T2. Uh, that's actually funny. You could probably pop the T1000 head sculpt on this. It looks like it's like melting from the movie. So this is another in hand pick here. Yeah, this looks insane. This this just makes me even more excited for the Pennywise and uh, the Batman. I think they're the only ones right now I have on order from in art. Because I didn't pre-order Gandalf. Uh, what was the other one they threw up? I think they threw a couple of other Lord of the Rings stuff. I'm not going to get them. Uh, I think they put another person up in pre-order. I don't really remember. But I think the ones I got definitely are this one. Pennywise and Robert Patterson's Batman. Uh, eventually, I want to see how their bail looks in compared to the one I got, the DX19. Because the DX19 is serviceable, I'm, I was looking at it now, it's serviceable, but I don't know how that's going to look in comparison side by side with this, because this looks so good, it might tarnish the way that that DX19 looks and I do have a bit of problems with that figure as in head sculpt wise and face wise and some of the proportions of the suit and the cape so that might having this figure next to that might actually worsen my opinion on that figure from Hot Toys so I may have to get the in art bail just to have them two as the same company paired up because again, there might be too much of a difference. But yeah, that's just the wait and see until we do comparisons on that. But yeah, this looks really good. So I want to see, let me see if that's... Uh, you can't really tell from the lighting. I wanted to see if there's difference with the hair. Because I don't know if this is the same head sculpt. This looks like the same head sculpt just taken in different environments. You can tell from the crease in the forehead and the paint. So yeah, these are all the same head sculpts by the looks of it. Does he have a photo of the other one? No, it doesn't look like it. Or maybe the, the lighting is just distorting the picture. I can't really tell. But anyway, these are awesome pics. Really close up. Like you can see the details, the scarring. The little makeup dots there, which is pretty accurate to the film. The little smirk. The rolly eyes are interesting. Uh, I don't know if I have a picture on of it. Uh, it looks like it's an actual metal rolly eye uh, system. So it's not like the DX08, for example. Uh, the Jack Nicholson Joker uh, with the plastic peg, which I'm actually scared to even touch that now. Uh, that will probably crumple if I touch that. This is actually a metal construction and I don't think I've put it in, in, the, in these photos, but I'll pop it up now and you can see it looks like a metal piece. That's really smart in art for doing that because uh, one of the problems with the original purrs were they shattered and broke. So the original DX11, I think the Bank Robber 2.0 also had rolly eyes, I think. The DX8, I'm surprised mine's still staying and has held up this long. Uh, maybe the original uh, Bale Batmans as well had that same problem with the peg shattering. But like I said, it's nice that this was a full metal compartment and not plastic. So again, that proves that more premium quality. 
So this is okay, nice. So we gotta zoom in. We got a really good picture here. I mean, that's Heath. I mean, I I would want to see someone, you know, give their opinion if they don't think this looks good. Uh, you know, not the bash people. I mean, if people don't think it looks like him, it doesn't. Uh, but in my opinion, this looks really, really good. So yeah, there is a bit of weathering on the jacket here. So this is not like the DX11, which looked really clean. You got weathering all here. Uh, the magnetic uh, pegs is also something I'm really interested in. Uh, speaking of caustic plastic, like I did with the base, they're Nosferatu. That's coming out mid next year. I'm pretty sure has the same magnetic swap out joints. So I want to see Hot Toys do a bit of this too now, where they get rid of uh, stuff that is prone to break. Like, for example, speaking of the head sculpt, it's magnetic joints. Uh, I think Hot Toys should start doing that now. Uh, I spoke about the Doc Brown before. Doc had a weird translucent neck peg, which is pretty much out of the ordinary from what I know with Hot Toys. I have no idea why they downgraded even more and done a translucent. They should just go full magnetic like this now. It shouldn't be that hard for them to do that. Same thing with the wrist pegs and the actual full forearms. I think every company should do this from now on. Because it, it, it elevates the realism so much more now. But yeah, I can't really complain about the tailoring. The tailoring looks really good. To be fair though, the DX11, aside from the purple jacket, I think the rest looked pretty good tailoring wise. Uh, this hugs the body a bit more better though. And the purple jacket, again, elevates it so much more realistic to the DX11. Uh, but yeah, overall, I'm pretty excited for this. Uh, I don't know which one by order is next to be released by these guys. I don't know if it was Robert Patterson's Batman or Gandalf. I think it was Gandalf, to be honest. I think uh, Patterson got postponed a bit. Uh, or maybe Pennywise was after this. I'm really, really excited for Pennywise because I'm a horror maniac and I'm really excited to see how that turns out. Uh, and hopefully they do more horror. I'm, again, a massive horror fan. I would love to see more of that. I want... I, I do wish one company does a Freddy. Uh, that's probably wishful thinking and because of the license is a bit muddly right now. Uh, that's more of just a personal thing, but... Until then, we've got great pieces like this for the meantime, I guess. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, overall, I'm really, really excited for this. Uh, and expect, you know, an unboxing and review for me. Uh, also, comparison to the DX19, I do. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any of the Hot Toy Jokers anymore. I sold them a fair few years ago. But I do have the Nicholson Joker from Hot Toys, which... In my opinion, is Hot Toys' best figure. So, I'll definitely do a comparison to that. To the best figure from Hot Toys, in my opinion. And this one. But, yeah. That's pretty much it for today. If you guys did enjoy this, make sure you like and sub. And I'll see you in the next one.